What's going on you guys? It's your boy 40 days, 40 nights, 369 in the building, man. I hope you guys are having a blessed day as always. Today what we're going to be reading through is Matthew chapter 6, verse 1 all the way to verse it goes all the way to verse 34. So 34 verses. So we're going to get into this, but in order for y'all to really understand, I want to read it in today's English is of sense. So I'm going to go in Bible Gateway like the last video. And just want to read this to y'all. But, you know, I think it's it's very easy and very simple to read the Bible as it is. But at the same time, it can be very stressful. The reason is, is because like ye stands for like you or you know what I'm saying? Or there'll be like persons instead of people. But just like different things like that. But the thing is like the Bible is fairly easy to read. It really is. But... As for now, I don't want to, like, read it to you to where I almost don't understand it. And then I try to interpret it and I can't really. So I want to go on Bible Gateway because I am just, I am just as new as this as you. Like, I'm very, very new to this Bible stuff. Very, very new to it. I am just at the beginning. And I am not an expert. I'm not a shaman. <laughs> I'm not no pastor. I'm not somebody who's like on a very high level that's going to speak this to you and they've been doing it for many years or something, you know. Me, I'm a disciple. I'm a student. So we're going to go to Matthew 6 on here. New International Version. We're going to read it through the New International Version because I'm pretty sure, like, y'all might be very confused with the old King James Version, you know what I'm saying? But I do want to start it off, like, I, I do want to read the King James Version out of my Bible, though. Like, I'm going to read it. But as for now, let me just read this to y'all. So first of all, I'm a, I'm going to read out the Bible and then I'll go to here. So be ye therefore perfect. Oh, wait. Hold on. Take ye and ye not ye do not your alms before men, and be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. So right here, what what God, what Jesus is saying here on the Sermon on the Mountain, is like yes, like you're you if you if you do all this for men and all these miracle works, all this stuff for men in the name of Jesus, you you don't have no reward in heaven. You have none. And let's see, so on here in the English interpreted, it says, Be careful not to practice your righteous in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. And then it says in verse 2, I'll just read it out of here so y'all can understand, but y'all can read through your Bible or whatever. This is what I read to them, read with on my alone time. All right. So when you give when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when but when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that so that your giving may be in secret. And, then your father who sees what you've done in secret will reward you. God will reward you in secret. So what this has to say is like, for example, me preaching this video to y'all right now. Okay, if I was only doing it just so I could get this video out and I was never practicing this in my own life and I was never trying to live the Jesus lifestyle and go by what Jesus says, I have no reward in heaven. You see, if you're doing Bible videos, whatever it is, or you're preaching, make sure when you're reading this, you're reading, you know, whatever you need to read on video. But behind closed doors, you're still reading maybe another chapter of the Bible or something, okay? There has to be something. you got to be living your life and doing it all in secret as well. Not all in secret. You could do things in front of people, but don't be making it just so you could show off. This gift I have is not for showing off to y'all at all, okay? So let's get into this. Verse 8. Oh, no, no, it was a verse 7. Verse 7. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they will for they will think they will be heard because of of their many words. 
do not be like them for your father knows what what you need before you ask him god knows what you need before you even ask him man he look at right there he's literally just said it freaking verse eight straight up but we're in verse nine and this is how we should pray our father hallowed be thy name our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name the kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us our daily bread forgive us for our sins forgiving from our trespasses as i forgive those that have trespassed against us in the name of jesus deliver me not into temptation but please deliver me from evil for for if you forgive other people when they sin against you your heavenly father will also forgive you but if you do not forgive others for their sins your father will not forgive your sins forgive others because look you trespass them just as much as you tri you're getting trespassed you know what i'm saying verse 16 this one's about fasting when you fast do not look do not look somber as the hip has the hypocrites do they for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting truly i tell you they have received their reward in full but when you fast put oil on your head and wash your face so so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting but only but only to your father who is unseen and your father who it who who sees what is done in secret i will reward you or will reward you okay so what i gotta say about that is for example you see all these spiritual youtubers and stuff oh i'm on this fast i'm on this fast we're on that grind day two and all this stuff you know what i mean bro like if all you're doing is that just for the views so people can see that you're on this journey and that's just it and it's all about you and it's very narcissistic you're getting no reward in heaven man that, that brings you no reward at all. You're doing it for men. I think that's pretty obvious. And why do it for men? When you can do it for your father in heaven. Look, so the next next one, the verse 19 to verse 24. It says, well, the, it, it, it talks about treasures in heaven. But it says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth. For moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and still but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and, and where thieves do not break in and still for where your treasure is there your heart will be also so wherever your treasure is whatever you're putting on the throne that's where your heart is going to be if you put your heart towards god that your heart's going to be freaking, you're going to have a pure heart, okay? You don't got to make, you, you we, we've all sinned, okay? But to have a pure heart, that doesn't mean that you have to not sin. No, to have a pure heart, it's a man of God's own heart. No matter how many times the righteous falls down, he still gets back up after the seven times, man. It's that simple, okay? To have a pure heart, you got to keep getting back up, okay? You keep messing up. Boom, you watched porn at that time. Boom, you freaking, you, you overate that time. Boom, you freaking, okay, ah, uh, you looked, you looked, you lusted at a woman that time. You just, you glanced, you know what I mean? And you thought about it. But then, you, you know, you, you got back up and you're like, all right, no, nah, I ain't like that. I ain't like that. I ain't that kind of man, okay? If that is you, you are a man of God's own heart and your treasure is in full in heaven, okay? Put your heart on Jesus, all right? Put your mind, your heart, your body, and your soul on Jesus Christ, all right? Then in verse 22, it says, The eye of a lamp, uh, the eye is the lamp of the body. For in your, for if your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Man, hallelujah. <laughs> you gotta understand, okay? If you're putting your eyes focused on Lord Jesus, okay? 
dude, your your heart and everything is gonna follow. Your whole body's gonna follow. You're gonna be a freaking body of light. If you put your eyes and you focus them somewhere else, okay, you're gonna you're gonna reap what you sow. It's that simple. If you're looking at something like let's say some gore, or some like some bad stuff, or just listening to freaking worldly music that's just completely bad. They just talk about sex, money, and drugs all the time. That's what your your whole body, that that's basically the light of it. That's what it's going to be. That's going to be the vibration of it. And it's going to be just, it's just messed up. You know what I mean? You got to have Lord Jesus. Nothing else. You don't need those crystals. You don't need, you don't need anything else outside of you. You just need God. That's it. But in verse... But in verse 24, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted and you'll be devoted to the one and despite the other. You cannot serve both God and money. You cannot serve both God and you can't serve money at the same time. And you cannot serve God and you can also serve alcohol at the same time you can't serve weed at the same time you can't serve you can't serve freaking your pornography at the same time you can't serve your hoes at the same time above god you're putting all these things on the throne before god okay god is always first and on top of that god is he's completely completely different okay and i'm not saying that oh i i don't drink like you know because i drink once in a while in celebrations or I don't smoke or all this stuff, you know what I mean? But what I'm saying is if you put that on the throne and you put that before Jesus Christ, before your creator, and you see that is your God, you're, dis you're, 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 you're distancing yourself from God. You're dividing yourself from God. Just like sin divides you from God, okay? And that's what it is. If you put something above God, that's idolatry, okay? You're breaking, a ten you're breaking one of the Ten Commandments. So you got to understand that. So, verse 25 through verse 34, the rest of it, do not worry. That's the topic. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, for what you will eat or you drink or what you will drink or about your body. What will you wear? It is not life more than food and the body more than clothes. So is is, is life not more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds in the air. They do not sow and, and reap for store away in barns. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. You are not, you are not much more valuable than they. Can anyone, can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? Can worrying add a single hour to your life? Stop worrying. God and by the way, we stopped at verse 27. But God, he has all control of your life. The same Jesus that feeds the pigeons in the air will make sure that you're good, okay? And every problem that you're having, you will be okay. Everything will be all right. Understand that. Every little thing will be all right. And you are not you are not going to be forsaken. You are not going to be left behind, okay? Unless you want to. So look, verse 28. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers on the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes and grass the field, which is which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire. Will he not much more clothe you 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 a little you a little faith basically have a little faith so do not worry saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear for the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them but seek first the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of heaven of his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day is enough tr trouble. Each day has enough trouble on its own. And man, that is true. You may be having a rough day right now. You may be going through a rough patch right now, a rough time. But you know, dude, t today 
is the only day you need to get through, okay? Don't think about tomorrow. Stop thinking about tomorrow, okay? Tomorrow is not here right now. You got to stay in the present. Yes, you got things planned for tomorrow, but stay in the present. You ain't going to get there if you don't stay in the present. It's that simple. Stay in the present. Yes, you got things to do. Maybe a businessman, a businesswoman. You got to keep going. But stay in the present. Just focus on what you're doing right there. Boom, and then move to the next thing and then keep going, okay? E, there's problems in everything you do. So why focus on the ones in the future when you got some that you got to take care of right now? It's that simple. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I hope you guys learned something. This, the, this is part of the Sermon on the Mountain in chapter 6 of Matthew. If you are going to, if you're barely starting to read the Bible, go through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then go into Acts. Okay, and that's where I advise for you to read. And if you understand that in the New Testament, you'll start to understand the Old Testament a lot more. That's what my dad was telling me. And it's true. I hope you guys like, subscribe, and comment. I love you guys. Peace out.